Hello, and welcome to Mining Review Africa. Well, all roads lead to Cape Town. Yes, we are only a few weeks away from mining in Darbot 2023. And like me, I'm sure you're looking forward to this year's event. Today, I'm joined by Simon Ford, who's the Portfolio Director of Global Natural Resources at Hive Group, who are the event organizers. And he'll be giving us a preview of what we can expect at this year's mining in Darbot. Simon, firstly, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, Simon, I want to start with, with this question. Now, mining in Darba returns to its traditional regular dates in the first week of February, as it's always done, except for last year. Now, has there been a greater interest in the event this year as opposed to when it was held in May last year? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely uh, had an impact, the fact that we've gone back to our normal dateline uh, of February. Um, when we we're thinking back, actually, to when we were coming back to launch the event um, the, for the first time post COVID pandemic, it was pushed back to May. There were still lots of restrictions in place leading up to the May event, which meant that it was only about four to five weeks before the show that the restrictions started to ease. And then we started to see much more uh, of an uptake in terms of registrations and commitments to sponsorship and the exhibition. This year, we've certainly seen that that commitment has come earlier and and stronger we, we had a record year in 2022 but now that we've had the commitments early plus the forecast from what we're seeing now and for the next few weeks leading up to the show is you know going to take us even further beyond what we were uh, looking to achieve this year and as a growth on 2022 so we would anticipate seeing between seven to eight thousand delegates in 2023 which would be a record year for mining in darba and we have a sold out uh, exhibition and we have you know a fully packed program and agenda uh, to cover in 2023 so it's all it's all looking really really good and really strong and i think being back in the february dateline people are a bit happier to come to cape town when they know the sun is going to be shining for the whole week um so yeah we're really we're really looking forward to it yeah i'm sure people are looking forward to a cape town summer as well simon i want to ask you what are the overarching themes at this year's event and how do they tie into current trends within the industry so i mean the main overarching theme for the show this year is uh, unlocking african mining investment stability security and supply and then underneath that we obviously have the kind of subsector of themes that come as a as a result of the overarching theme. So if we break down each of the S's, we can see how they tie into the current industry trends that we're seeing. Uh, so if we start with stability, so the political, economic and metal price stability that is key to securing long, long-term long investment. Um, you see the events in Ukraine that they're affecting commodity prices, cost of labor, energy, raw, raw materials. I think we know just by reading the news how relevant this is to our everyday lives and how it's also impacting mining uh, operations. Um, we have a great session from Jay Truesdale, the CEO of Racity Worldwide on day two, that's going to look at that, the impact of geopolitics and particularly the war in Ukraine and how that is impacting African mining. Uh, that will happen on day two on the main stage. Secondly, looking at security, so security of supply. So that's a, the biggest priority, we think, underpinning the energy transition through battery storage, EVs, uh, materials for wind, solar, geothermal. Um, and I think, you know, that is particularly relevant if you're looking at security of supply for critical minerals. Um, we have a really, really large delegation and senior delegation coming from the US, which will be led by Special Presidential Coordinator Amos Hochstein and the Under Secretary of State Jose Fernandez. And what the, I mean, they're coming on site really to strengthen their ties with Africa and support its journey and their own supply in the development of critical minerals. Um, that is very much linked to the um, to the energy transition and specifically at mining in Darbo, we're talking about Africa's and mining's role within the energy transition. Um, we've got great presentations on the main stage. We've got there's a panel on day one actually that will bring together the World Bank, Fair Cobalt Alliance, Bushfield Minerals and Wood Mackenzie. And I think th these are the kind of conversations and topics that we'll see taking place right uh, right across the week. Um, and then finally, sorry to finish, so it would be uh, supply. So where is it that mining supply chains and infrastructure, I mean, they're increasingly integral to developing the economic empowerment, particularly if we're you know, looking at AFC, FTA context, 
and through the mining in Darba InfraCheck stage, which hopefully we'll have an opportunity to talk about, we know that this is attracting uh, a lot of interest and is very current. We'll have the in, uh, Infrastructure Development Corporation of South Africa speaking um, and BHP explore returning to Indaba for the first time in a while to talk about the role of supply chains on the energy transition and also looking into critical minerals uh, exploration. So, I mean, all kind of tying into the key the, the key topics and trends for the week at Mining Indaba. Yes, yeah, so, so Simon, an, another topic I'm sure that will be spoken in the corridors and in many panel discussions as well is ESG. Yeah. So in that regard, can you explain a little bit about your junior ESG awards and also your sustainability day? Yes, yeah, so, um, I mean, if we look at the overarching theme, we know that this year, like it was last year, ESG is not directly mentioned in the theme. Um, but it is certainly, I think, as you mentioned, it is, in, it is incorporated into much of the content across the week and will be a big point of discussion, given that it's, it, it's a cornerstone of attracting foreign investment and it's becoming more entrenched into a mining company's everyday policies. Um, we see a greater emphasis on the S, the social element of ESG, working with local communities, being inclusive, demonstrating value, and that's really increasing in importance. So when we continue with programs like the Junior ESG Forum and the Sustainable Development Day. This is why, because we know it's adding so much value to the uh, to uh, the overall program. So yeah, ESG Awards, uh, it's back for the second year in a row, which is great. And it's the way or the, the opportunity that we have to highlight what junior mining companies are doing in the industry, where they're excelling, making significant pos uh, positive ESG impact and recognizing what they're doing and recognising their achievements towards sustainable development. Um, so it's great for us to show that. And um, we're looking at the sustainable practices that junior miners are using and how they're encouraging others to take that path as well. So we'll specifically focus on categories and look for submissions around climate, water, transparency, economy, really importantly, community engagement, labour, uh, diversity and inclusion. So there's yeah, there's plenty of subjects and things for people to get involved in. Uh, and yeah, we're very much looking forward to that program as well. Um, Sustainable Development Day happening on the, on the Tuesday of Indaba is really, it's a deep dive really into the current challenges and opportunities within a mining sustainability context. So if we're looking at some of the topics that we'll cover, and it is hugely important to the week really, where are we, where, where are we sorry, in relation to COP27 and, and the decarbonisation mandates that have come out globally? Um, how does that impact security of supply? We've got a good session hosted by Deloitte uh, featuring the ICMM and also our partners at uh, Alternative Mining in Darba. Um, and we'll also we'll kind of look at governance and, and sustainability frameworks as well. Um, another great session with Good Governance Africa, Katoka Mining the, and the Minerals Council South Africa, looking at what are some of the failures so far? How do we how do we learn from it? How can we highlight what good work is being done, particularly in support and in collaboration with local communities and how other companies can kind of take that forward as well? Um, so plenty of like strong strong topics to get into and you'll see that you know mining in Darwin doesn't shy away from those difficult conversations it, it's our duty to put that in that into the spotlight and make sure that we're talking about the challenges as well as the opportunities that the industry has and hopefully if people can come together and the key players are all in the room together with you know they can share what they're doing they can learn from each other and then find collective uh, collective solutions to drive the industry forward Right. Simon, you, you mentioned, you know, some high level speakers, um, some uh, very uh, high level uh, companies as well. Once again, Mining and Darba has got the support of many um, government departments from across Africa and in fact, from across the world, etc. Can you name a few of the government representations that will be at this year's event? And secondly, why is it so important to have them on board at Mining and Darba? Right. Um, yeah, I mean, so this year being no, no different, we're, we're honoured to be hosting the real, um, the top level senior government delegates at Mining and Darba this year. Um, the Honourable Minister Gwede Mantashe, he'll be a strong presence throughout the week again, which is great. And we're very, very grateful for that. Um, we'll also be joined by Mining and Natural Resources Ministers from the DRC, Nigeria, Zambia, Botswana, Angola, Kenya, Ghana, many, many more from across the continent. And we, we anticipate we'll be at 
above 2022 in terms of numbers of ministers. So we would we had 48 in 22. We are expecting over 50 uh, in 2023, which is really strong. From further afield, we expect ministerial delegations from Australia, the United States, United Kingdom, India, Saudi Arabia. And I think that really kind of highlights the importance and the melting pot uh, uh, that, that, that we're creating in Cape Town for that week. So taking it a step further, understanding why it's important. I think if we're looking at what is going to drive and sustain long term investment, a lot of that responsibility and opportunity sits with countries, governments having their input enabling them to engage with the investor community is what's going to be critical for allowing the industry to move to move forward. Um, specifically, if you talk about political stability, attractive regulation, fiscal frameworks, supporting local content in an ESG context, again, particularly the social aspect, which I mentioned, um, making sure that the mining industry is working with and to the benefit of local communities where it uh, operates, that is absolutely fundamental and, and key you know governments play a key role in shaping the industry creating the right environment for investment and having those frameworks in place that you know in, ensure that local communities are supported throughout that process yeah simon moving on to uh, an interesting topic i've certainly haven't heard this term before infratech please can you tell us what is it, what are, are its objectives, and what can delegates look forward to when discussing this topic? Yeah, so yeah, as you mentioned, so Infratech is a new uh, is a new three day program for us this year, which we're very much looking forward to. It is actually an amalgamation, a, a combination of the infrastructure and supply chain stream we had last year and the mining 2050 program that we had last year, which has come together into one uh, into one setting. Um, the primary objective would be to address critical challenges and opportunities in infrastructure and logistics development and looking at new technology, because we know, you know, we believe that holds the key to successful mining operations and uh, effective cost management. So to operate effectively in an ESG context, mine sites, you know, they need access, uh, the ability to export, reliable power, but they also need to adapt to the latest technologies to realise uh, efficiencies to increase production and to improve safety as well. So I think picking out some of the highlights, if you look at the agenda that we're that we're putting together, it's hard. There's a lot going on. Maybe I'll use some personal uh, some personal preference here, but I'll certainly keep uh, keep an eye out um, for a session on the path to zero emission through mining uh, battery electric mining through battery electric vehicles, which will feature the CEO of the IDC and the International Lithium Association. That will be really interesting. Um, supply chains and the just energy transition. So looking at Africa's role in this journey uh, and what it means for uh, operational management. We have some great companies here and people speaking. We've got the Africa uh, Infrastructure Development Association, AFIDA. Um, we have Sonia Scarcelli, who's the vice president of BHP Explore. And we also have the chief investment officer from uh, Af uh, Africa Finance Corp. Um, I think, sorry, and finally, just to finish, we've got one really interesting session in here that sparked my interest in something that I'm making a note to follow. And it's the update from Zambia's National Commercial Bank on the ban on the battery manufacturing facility um, partnership that they're um, in partnership with, with the DRC. So looking yes. at how their infrastructure is evolving to enable this um, and to watch how things uh, progressing because hopefully that is a model that can be repl uh, replicated uh, across the continent. So, yeah, lots of interesting content, uh, content and some really fantastic speakers here. Great stuff, Simon. I, I, I want to go back to the roots of mining in Darbo and let's look at investment. How is mining in Darbo ensuring that the conf conference is still the world's number one investment mining conference? Are there any particular panel discussions or side events that will promote this aspect? Um, yes, yeah, so obviously investment is at the core of what we do, investing in African mining in Darba. You know, if you take the core purpose of the event, it is to continue to drive investment uh, into African mining. Um, we've, we've talked a lot about some of the, the speeches, presentations and panels that are taking place. But I think it's, yeah, it's worth summarising, saying that all, all of the content is shaped with the, the ultimate goal to help support investment uh, into African mining. Um, and there are some particular programmes. Uh, I've picked out three that I think really highlight this. The first being the one-to-one -one mining investment Cape Town event, which is yeah. 
now 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 part of the mining and DARPA program it's part of the high family and that is a world leading platform for one on one meetings um, with the pure purpose of connecting mining companies with investors to stimulate investment so that would be number one secondly we have our uh, explorer showcase which is another new program for 2023 um, which is a sold out feature in the exhibition floor in partnership with the DMRE South Africa. And that's it's brilliant. It's creating a huge buzz with investors and the early stage uh, exploration companies. And that will be a physical display in the exhibition supported by a masterclass um, where we're helping mining companies to understand what it is that investors are looking for and vice versa and enables us as the organizers to say we're helping to drive investment into every stage of the mining cycle from the from the early stage startups to juniors to mid tiers to majors uh, and that's really uh, in, that's really important for the mining in Darba definitely uh, and then finally would be the uh, investment battlefield which continues it's been running for a few years now but it's the kind of dragon's den style competition which is okay. really fun but it does allow us to get you know the junior miners get them on stage pitch against the other juniors in front of respected judges and investors showcase their projects attract investment and actually really showcase the future of uh, the African mining sector. So lots to look forward to there too. Yeah, absolutely. I, I must confess that the investment battlefield is actually one of my favorite um, events okay, at Mining in Darbo. So looking forward to you to this year's one as well. Simon, the, the reality is that COVID-19 hasn't gone away. Now, last year, there were various uh, uh, safety practices in place, you know, um, in conforming with, with with South African government health regulations, et cetera. But let's look at this year. How are you maintaining that people still stay safe, you know, that there's no risk of, of catching COVID? Um, are you still going to insist on a vaccination certificate or a negative PCR test for delegates? Um, we we won't be. No, so those, those rules are, are in line with government guidelines. So when it comes to entry in, into the event and how we set up and deliver the event from, an, from a health and safety point of view, we will always follow the local government guidance and the local government guidance is not requiring that for this year. However, we as organisers take that responsibility extremely seriously. And I think, you know, we, we, have, we have learned a lot as event organisers and as a business as to how to put on events safely and securely um, throughout the COVID pandemic. But all of the best practices that we've taken from that will definitely continue through. Uh, into putting on this show. So extra cleaning stations, being being vigilant um, and ensuring that we're keeping up to date with all the latest developments, not just from now, but you know, we've got a few weeks left. And as we get closer to the show, we'll be looking to see how things have progressed and we can, you know, up up upscale the the necessary measures uh, as we need to. So whilst you know it's not you cannot say that there is zero risk of of catching anything when you come to an event or being in a, in a group of people, we will take every possible precaution and measure that we need to to ensure that the safety of you know the health and safety of our delegates is maximized whilst whilst they're on site i think that's very uh, important for us and for the people that are coming okay one final question simon i know the event is only a few weeks away but is yeah. there time for for people to still register to attend Absolutely, yes. Um, we would encourage people to go via the website, so www.miningindarba.com. Um, there is still time to register. We would urge people to do it as quickly as possible. We know Cape Town is going to be extremely busy that week. Um, so, yeah, certainly get that booked, get your pass booked, get hotels booked. Um, and so, yeah, we look forward to welcoming you in February. Great stuff. Simon Ford. Portfolio Director of Global Natural Resources at Hive Group. Thank you for joining us today, and I'm looking forward to seeing you at Mining in Darba as well. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you.